I want to welcome you to today's episode of Spirit Communication Session. I'm going to be sharing with you on baby faith. Baby faith. In the book of Mark chapter 9, a very interesting story of a man who had a son who was possessed with an evil spirit. The Bible says Jesus came down from the mountain and he saw a drama ensuing between the man and his disciples. And when he began to question them, the man said, Master, I brought my son to your disciples because he's possessed with a violent spirit that tears him apart, but your disciples could not cast him out. And then Jesus asked the father of the boy a very crucial question. Do you believe that I can do something about the condition of your son. And the father said, yes, I believe. Oh, help my own belief. That portion of the Bible where the father expressed two views in one verse, the Lord began to open my eyes to a mystery behind that. The father said, I believe. Oh Lord, help my own belief. It's very important that we understand that in Christianity, the power of God is unchanging. The anointing and the miracle of God is undeniable. But we must understand that it is always to every man according to his faith. That is, faith is the currency of the spiritual realm. When it comes to Christianity, faith is the spiritual currency that we use to purchase things that God has released for us. What that simply means is that whatever God has promised you, you must receive it by faith, by faith, by faith. And that is why Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, For without faith it is impossible to please God, because he that comes to God must believe that God is, and God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That simply means that the miracle power of God is not in question, but our faith, the ability of our faith to be able to receive what God is releasing for us, that is what differentiates one believer from another. If not, we can challenge God with the accusation of partiality for blessing A and not blessing B. But when we begin to rise in the things of the Spirit, we discover that the blessings of God are open for all his children, but it is always to every man according to his faith. That is, you receive from God with your faith. You receive from God with your faith. It's as if I stretch my hands to you and I say, take. And there's something I'm holding in my hands. And then you have to stretch your hand to receive it. That stretching of your hand to receive it is what we call faith. Faith is receiving from God. Faith is is, 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 it goes beyond just believing. Yes, it goes beyond just believing. As a matter of fact, if I'm to break faith into two, I will break it into two. Belief plus trust equals to faith. Believing is not what makes faith. Belief plus trust, because you can believe and you don't trust. That is not perfect yet. You must believe and then you must trust. Trust is the 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 icing on the cake of faith. I believe God. Do you know that our hospitals are filled with many believers who are sick and who know that God can heal them? They believe that God is the healer, but why is that not culminating into faith that can bring their healing? Because when it comes to faith, we must believe that God is and then we must be willing to trust him. I'm going to talk about that shortly. But let's get back to the story of the father of the boy. Jesus said, do you believe? Do you believe? You know, the brothers, the, the sisters of, of uh, Lazarus, Mary and Martha, they believed in Jesus. But did they trust in his ability to raise Lazarus back to life? No, they did not. Because um, Martha said to Jesus, if you were here, my brother would have been, you know, they, they would not have died. And Jesus said, you will see your brother again. And then Martha said, it's going to be on the last day, which is the day of the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus said, no, you, are, you believe me as the master. You believe me as the son of God, but you have to add trust to your belief. And then he said, take me to the tomb. Roll away the stone. That was the act of trust. Rolling away the stone was the act of trust. They believed. When they added trust to believe, it was faith. 
Trust plus believe equals to faith. Or believe plus trust equals to faith. So we believe God and then we must then trust Him. Trust is acting on your belief. Trust is acting on your belief. And that is what culminates to faith. Now, the father of the boy said to Jesus, he said, Master, I brought this boy. I brought this boy so that you will heal him. Now that means that at a point, the boy has been infected with this, um, he has been afflicted with this strange spirit. And you know, from the account of the father, he has been, it, it has been a case that has been like that since he was a baby, since he was a child. So the father had lived with the boy for several years with that infirmity, with that affliction from the, from, from, from the devil. But he got to a point and he said, there is a man called Jesus. Who is a miracle worker i believe he can eat my son and he brought his son the step of bringing his son to jesus was an act of trust yes it was an act of trust because he trusted that jesus had the ability of feeling his son but now he's face to face with jesus he believes he trusts which means he has faith but now let's look at his faith sir do you believe i can do this i believe lord oh and my own belief I believe, Lord, oh, help my unbelief. Now, what does this mean? The Lord began to speak to me that um, when we talk about faith, you know, faith has to, we, 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 faith is not just a constant. There is, there is dimension, there are dimensions of faith, there are measures of faith. And that's what we see all through the um, life of Jesus on earth. He categorized faith with various terminology. He called some little faith, he called some great faith, you know, you know so, so faith is not faith. Faith is in degrees. Faith is in measure. So, the father of this boy had faith. That is the reason why he brought the son to Jesus. If he did not have faith, he wouldn't have come. Because there are quite a number of persons in the days of Jesus who had children that were attacked. attacked, Children that were under afflictions of the devil, but they never brought those children to Jesus. So, the father brought that child to Jesus because he, he had faith that Jesus could do something about it. But now, he got to the point that the faith needed to receive from God. And there was a challenge. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Please don't miss this. Now, the Lord spoke to me, say, son, what this man had is a kind of faith that is called baby faith. Everybody say baby faith. He said the kind of faith that this man has is called baby faith. Now, baby faith is faith, but it's faith that have not been matured. Baby faith is faith. But it is faith that have not been matured. And the Lord began to show me a scenario of a little child who was learning how to walk. And then I began to see the child learning how to walk. The child was taking sta staggering step. He would take a step, take another step, and fall. And stand again, take a step, take another step, and fall. And stand again. And the Lord began to speak to me, say, that is the, that is the, the practical explanation of baby faith. That is, this is a child that is already walking, but the legs are not yet strong. The limbs, the limbs, they are not yet balanced. But yet the child is walking. But the, the beautiful thing about this is that um, even as much as we, we, we agree to the fact that the child is not yet perfected in walking, but the child is actually walking. And it's a delight for every parent to see the child take those first steps. Yeah, I remember um, um, the first step that my children take, and each, uh, you know, took each, each and every one of them. It was always a delight seeing them. Wow, we'll be excited and say, wow, this child is already learning how to walk. Wow, wow, we'll, we'll be encouraging the child. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And now the Lord began to speak to me that this is something that needs to be addressed in the body of Christ because we saw, we place so much emphasis on great faith that we neglect the place of baby faith because we, we forget that there is no great faith or mature faith that was not once baby faith. I take that again. There is no great faith or mature faith that was not once baby faith. As a matter of fact, there is no one on earth today who is walking, you know, and running or as or you know as 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 a develop a limb that is able to walk uh, perfectly that at a point in his or his life his or her life was not at a point that uh, he was taking baby steps. It was those baby steps that finally graduated into what we see today as matured adult steps. And that's the lesson. That is, there is no mature faith without baby faith. It takes baby faith to get to the point that you have mature faith. Now, let me put it this for you in a simple way. If all you have is baby faith and you are not willing to use your baby faith, you will never have mature faith. Because we don't, we don't, um, we cannot skip the process of growth. 
in the place of faith. Faith grows. Yeah, faith grows. If you are a believer that have had a consistent work with God and um, you have kept yourself on a, on a constant diet of feeding on the word of God, you would have discovered that the more you begin to know God, the more you begin to feed on God's word, the more your faith will begin to grow. So faith grows. But everybody starts from a point, which is called baby faith. So the man had faith, but this faith can be classified as baby faith. Why? Because he believed. But yet, he said, help my own belief. Lord, I believe. He believed, that's why he brought his son. Do you believe? I believe, Lord. Oh, help my own belief. Now, the first quality of baby faith is called staggering. Staggering faith, that is, faith that staggers. It's like a baby taking baby steps. It staggers. It staggers. Now, whenever you notice that your faith is staggering, that is, at the point you say, Lord, I believe you on this matter. So minutes later, you say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. It's as if your faith is shaking. What you have is not doubt. You have faith. One that has that will never say, Lord, I believe. No, 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 no. One that has that will never say, Lord, I believe. The fact that you are able to say you believe God and you are able to believe for a season is a sign that you have faith. But the issue is that your faith is not yet mature. So what you have is baby faith. Now the Lord began to speak to me that um, um, the body of Christ must realize that baby faith must be encouraged. Just the same way the father or the mother encourages their children, you know, taking uh, baby steps and say, come on, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. We must encourage baby faith. And as a matter of fact, Jesus encouraged baby faith in the Bible. How, how do I mean? Now this man, he had baby faith. Lord, I believe. Oh, help my own belief. Jesus did not scold him. You know what he did? He prayed for the son. Because um, what God looks for is faith. What God looks for is faith. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you very quickly what to do if you notice that you have baby faith because baby faith is staggering faith. Another word for baby faith is little faith. You know, the, the disciples of Jesus, when they began to walk with Jesus, they, they began to grow from doubt into faith. But their faith also had to go through the process of growth. Before they became those mighty faith giant apostles it was never like that one time very interesting scenario the bible said they were with jesus in the boat jesus was in the inner part of the boat jesus was sleeping and a storm came jesus was in the boat jesus the son of god the incarnate of the father he was in the boat and the disciples when they saw the storm they panicked they panicked and you know what they came to meet jesus and they woke him up and they said master care us not thou that we perish we are going to die Jesus was in the boat. I mean, who storm can capsize the boat that Jesus is in? The presence of Jesus will not, does not mean the absence of storm. That you have Jesus doesn't mean you know a storm. But the presence of Jesus is the guarantee that the storm will not overwhelm you. The presence of Jesus is the guarantee that the storm will not kill you. I say that again. That you have Jesus in your life does not mean the storm will not come. No! Christianity is not the absence of storm. Christianity is the guarantee of victory over every storm. Hallelujah! So... They came to wake Jesus and they said, Master, care us not that that we perish. And you know what Jesus told them? Oh, ye of little faith. In other words, what's wrong with you? You have left that, you are in faith, but your faith is still the faith of a baby. You are still taking staggering step. Now, why do, did I not call that um, that, but I call it baby faith? Because um, that they went to tap on Jesus to wake him up is because they believe that he can do something about it. True. If they didn't believe Jesus can do something about it, they would have just taken a dive into the sea and tried to swim for their life. But they went to wake him up because they believed that he could do something about it. But their faith was still in infancy. Yes, it was going to grow with time, but it was still in infancy. And you know the good thing about it? Jesus said you have little faith. But you know what? It still calmed the storm. Now that means that the baby faith is not hopeless faith. That you have baby faith does not mean that um, you are never going to get a miracle for God. There is a there is a formula that the Lord gave me that um, anyone that notices that he has baby faith, that is little faith or staggering faith, you know, faith that is shaking, there is a formula that the Lord gave me that you can use to get the same results that those that have great faith we have. Are you ready for it? I'm going to give you one formula, but I'll break it into two or possibly three. Now, the formula that the Lord gave me that um, if you notice that you have baby faith, that is, not that you don't have faith. Now, I'm not saying for those that doubt, okay? Personally, I don't believe that there's any Christian that don't have faith. Because the, for you to even become born again, it takes faith to accept that Jesus can save your soul. 
I believe that every believer has faith. But the problem is that a lot of believers, they have been on baby faith level for years. Their faith is not going. Okay? Now, if you want to know how to grow your faith, you can check through this channel. You will see other, uh, I've, I've talked about how to grow your faith. Okay? Um, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, faith can grow itself by the word of God. Okay? Now, now, that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about how to be able to get your results if you notice you have baby faith. Imagine, imagine you're in a situation of emergency and you want to receive a thing from God and you know you cannot receive from God without faith. And you notice that your faith is a baby faith. That is, you are doubting and they say that you are believing, you are doubting, you are believing, you are doubting, you are believing, you are doubting, you are believing. What do you do about it? The Lord gave me the formula. What do you do? You ask for help. You ask for help. Now, when I say you ask for help, um, you know, when a baby is taking baby steps and um, the baby wants to um, move in the pace of an adult, the baby stretches hand to the adult and then the adult either holds it the baby's hand and help the baby to work better or lifts up the baby. So baby faith can be guided. Baby faith can be helped. Now, how do you ask for help? The first way that you, the first systems or spiritual advantage that can help you to get results if you notice you have baby faith um, is called the prayer of agreement. The Bible says if two of you shall agree on a thing, then it shall be done for you by my father in heaven. That means that if I notice that I have baby faith, I can I can agree with someone who I, I believe that has a higher level of faith, okay, than me. And then you say, please, brother, agree with me on this matter. Agree with me on this issue. Agree with me. Because when baby faith me is mixed with um, a mature faith, they, they are able to get a multiplied result because 1 plus 10 is equal to 11. And 11 is greater than 1. 11 is greater than 10. That's the, that's the advantage of prayer of agreement because prayer agreement prayer of agreement gives you a combined faith that is greater than the faith of the individual parties that are involved. So this is something that is already done in the body of Christ. We must revive it. We must revive the place of prayer of agreement. You know those days while growing up, we used to have prayer partners. Someone that you agree with, someone that um, that both of you come to an agreement that you are going to be prayer partners. You come together, you pray together. But that is dying in the church today. We must revive that. That's the reason why we cannot see much result in our life because most Christians still have baby faith. And baby faith cannot do some things in this kingdom because it doesn't have the requisite spiritual strength to be able to win some battles and be able to change some situations. So, baby faith can be helped in the place of agreement. You can go into prayer of agreement and say, agree with me, agree with me, agree with me. That's the first um, way that you can be able to um, help baby faith. Another way that you can help baby faith still in the, in the, in the, in the, in the topic of um, ask for help is to connect um, with uh, your spiritual authority over your life, okay? Yes, he is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God himself established spiritual authorities, okay? Abraham was not just the physical father of Isaac. He was also the spiritual father of Isaac because the Bible said Abraham would teach his children. Yes, in the ways of the Lord. So, he was not just a physical father, he was also a spiritual figure over the life of his children. So, it's very important that we understand that that's another way you can, you can connect your faith. And that's exactly what, um, what the man, the other father of the, the, the child did with Jesus. He had baby faith, but Jesus had, I mean, faith without measure. So, he came and um, decided to connect with his request to Jesus and he got a miracle so you can take the prayer of agreement you can connect with an higher authority over your life spiritually and then you can you can directly ask for the help of the holy spirit you can directly ask for the help of the holy spirit understanding that um, um, um you already have faith but your faith is not sufficient okay your faith is not sufficient you can directly ask for the help of the holy spirit just like the father of the boy he said lord i believe oh help my unbelief he acknowledged the fact that he needed help and then Jesus helped him. I hope you were blessed by this um, episode. I, I, I want to quickly say this to you. It's very important that you understand this, that if you notice that you have baby feet, you must use that feet. If you don't use baby feet, it will never get matured. It's like a little child that, that is learning how to take baby step and the, you, you decide to stop the child from taking baby step. The child will never learn to take mature step. The, 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 the limbs of the child will never be strong enough for that because it is the process of taking baby steps that the child, the limbs and the legs, the bones become stronger and stronger and the child perfects how to walk. So you must use your baby faith. No matter how little your faith is, use that faith. Is it, does it not, is it not interesting that the disciple came to meet Jesus one time and said, increase our faith? 
Do you know what Jesus told them? If your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move, and it shall be moved. In other words, Jesus was saying that it's not about increasing your faith. It's about using the faith that you have. If you use the faith that you have, then it will keep increasing because faith grows by usage. Faith grows by usage. If you abandon your, your faith and you have to start running etter scatter, you know, to one man to help you, to another man to help you because you don't want to use the faith, thinking that your faith will never be sufficient, your faith will never grow. You, you use your faith and your faith grows in the place of usage. Just like a man that keeps using his, you know, his hands to carry every weight, then the muscles begin to grow. So in the process of using your faith, you know, the faith begins to grow, your faith begins to grow, your faith begins to grow. You can never know what your faith can do unless you put your faith to work, okay? So, baby faith. Baby faith is faith, but just that the faith is little. What do you do? You ask for help. I hope you were blessed. My prayer for you is that in the name of Jesus, that God will give you the grace to be able to take steps and use the faith that you have. And as you take those steps and begin to use that faith, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ that the faith will produce results for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the faith will produce results. The faith will produce results for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I agree with you for any issue of your life that you are trusting God for a change. But the more you are trying, the more it seems as if nothing is working. I connect my faith with your faith right now, wherever you are watching from. I decree that you receive help from above. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that your faith.